Alrighty, welcome back. We are in uh, starting up game two of the series of UC Davis Aggies versus Georgia Tech Esports. Georgia Tech did narrowly lose the last game, so it is in Aggies' favor 1-0 right now, but Georgia Tech is not out of it quite yet. They are a 6-1 uh, team can, uh, if you look at the last season, and they have something to prove here. Joining me today, or I am Zingle, joining me once again is Hachiko. How are you doing? All right, what is up, everybody? I thought Georgia Tech had that game for sure in the bag, but just uh, overextending a couple times where they weren't really quite ready to push the advantage yet. They were okay if they just kind of sat back, but they felt pressure to end the game a bit, and that led to a UC Davis victory. So how do you feel this game is going to go? you think that Georgia Tech's going to change it up a bit or go for a similar strategy? I'm not quite sure what their strategy will be. I'm not too familiar with the team, but looking at last game, they did have a solid showing. They were not underdogs at, at all there. And, you know, they they have something to prove, so I think they could uh, secure a win here and push this to a Game 3 series. Uh, first ban coming out, once again, banning Underlord. We've seen that banned a bunch now. First ban, I kind of want to see it make it through just to see why everyone's banning it, but... You know, it's understandable. Teams are afraid of it. You definitely don't want to let it through on your other team when you are on uh, one one game away from losing the series. And uh, on UC Davis' side, they banned the Lone Druid this time. They're like, we just played it. We know it's strong. We don't want you to have it now because we're looking to change up our strategy. And they also banned Ember Spirit, just a very strong first pick. Yeah, I believe uh, someone in Georgia Tech, I'm not sure who, uh, is a Lone Druid player himself. And... I was about to say last game, it was a bit of a block pick to pick it up in the first phase there with the slaughter. And this game, they're going to bend it out instead, leaving the Luna through. And they're picking a Shadow Demon for themselves, potentially baiting Georgia Tech into picking the Luna. As Shadow Demon is a pretty strong counter against that hero. Shadow Demon is good against Luna in the same sense that Shadow Demon is good. Or Shadow Demon is good against Luna in the same sense that Shadow Demon is good with Luna because you can make illusions of that hero regardless of what team it's on. Um, Georgia Tech banning that silencer, are they looking to go for a wombo combo fight and just ban out a uh, anti-team fight hero? As team, uh, silencer really just ruins that. It seems that was their strength last game. Earthshaker, I definitely would give the MVP there. He was making the plays all around uh, from the early game up to when he got his blink and that's when he really started getting the Echo Slams as well as like multiple man fishers every time off. They might pick it up here once again. Yeah, that was and a very impressive like Earthshaker showing, to be honest. The Silencer pick uh, being a pretty strong counter to heroes such as Earthshaker, and uh, they favored Storm Spirit last game as well, so they're just going to go with the same bands. Yeah, well, they're taking uh, some of their reserve time on this uh, first phase pick phase. They do have the dual pick, so they can get two heroes back to back, and that's a very strong opportunity to get big combos like the Shadow Demon Luna if that were still in it, or a uh, setup stun followed by a re unreliable stun. Very often that you see that. Last game, it was UC Davis that had the combo pick, and they went for the Lone Druid Slardar, which threw off Georgia Tech a lot, and it sure threw off us casters. But Georgia Tech going to go back for two of the same heroes that they used last time. Both of these heroes had a very strong like uh, presence in every single fight with their Blink Dagger initiations and counter initiations using their uh, ultimate from Centaur and Fissure from Earthshaker. So are you happy to see them doubling down on the same strategy, uh, even allowing the Luna through? Yeah, that's what I asked you at the beginning, yeah. uh, if they were going to uh, stick with the same thing or uh, try to switch yeah. it up. Uh, I guess they're going to decide to stick with the same thing, but that means they're going to give Shadow Demon Luna away to UC Davis, which is a really strong combination. I'm not so sure about uh, going with the strategy. I guess they feel like they could have just played a bit better and taken the victory, but it's not the same draft on the side of UC Davis. They do have to deal with the Shadow Demon Luna now. Oh yeah, the Shadow Demon Luna, very uh, potent combo. Shadow Demon just giving free Luna illusions that deal 60% of Luna's damage, and since there are two of them, it's basically like having two Lunas on your team constantly hitting out uh, lanes. And you have the save. You know, if Earthshaker or Centaur jumps on the Luna, you instantly disrupt, and not only did you save the Luna, but you're turning it around back onto them with extra damage. It is a very scary thing, and it allows Shadow Demon just to farm, if you want to look at it that way. If the game gets into a stalemate, Shadow Demon will most likely outfarm the supports from Georgia Tech just because she is basically a carry at that point. 
It was really smart leading with the Shadow Demon pick mm -hmm. as it's pretty much put up the question whether Georgia Tech Esports wants to pick up the Lunar or not. And it doesn't seem like they're particularly comfortable in that hero. So they're going to decide to pass it away. But because of that, they're going to get Shadow Demon Luna themselves. It is also quite possible that they expect the Shadow Demon Luna combo. Once they saw the Shadow Demon, they know that UC Davis is going to double down and get the Luna, so they're just preparing for it. They have a strategy in mind, and they they are inviting it. You know, they want to play against the Shadow Demon Luna because they figured it out and they know how to win. That's honestly, you know, also if they go to the same draft, it's not too bad. Uh, we saw VSJ Spectre own Luna in that one game. Yeah, you you. Send out five illusions, it tanks up the Luna ult and glaives, and it turns the damage right back to the team. So, yeah, the dispersion doing a ton of damage back to her. It is possible that they just double down. They show, okay, we messed up last time, but we know what we're doing now. We know how you guys play, and we're going to prove that you don't have it. You don't, you know, you're not a better team than us. You don't have what it takes to beat us 2 0. The last game was definitely just on Odie's back, pretty much. Lone Druid. Being up there in net worth and doing a ton of damage in fights, but he got focused. And it, as uh, it hit the late game, every single fight, Lone Druid was dying almost immediately. But the Lone or the OD definitely picked up the slack and started outplaying everyone pretty much in those uh, late game team fights. I like the respect ban for the Wyvern here. They uh, are going a very similar strategy in a very similar draft to last time, so they don't want that counter initiation. And Wyvern is extremely good against the Shadow Demon Luna combo. If you manage to get a Wyvern ultimate on the correct Luna right after the disruption, Shadow Demon just kills the carry. You know, you become a carry, but you also, you know, you hurt. <laughs> uh, the funny thing as well is if he gets the disruption off on Luna and he's standing too close, if you just ult the Shadow Demon as well, he just kills himself with his own illusions. Yeah, so very solid ban coming out of UC Davis, knowing that it's a counter or it's a uh, respect ban and it's just good against their their current strategy. So I like it. I'm a big fan. Um, how do you feel about the bans from Georgia Tech? They're banning two offlaners, both initiators. In the first phase, they also banned an offlaner. Are they afraid of UC Davis's offlaner in particular, or do they just want to get rid of these initiators so they have control of the tempo? Uh, the Dazzle pickup will make sense of the Axe ban, but they just trying to reduce the amount of pressure they have in the mid probably means that they're going to go for a similar strat. They might just pick up Spectre once again, and with the... Uh, Two save heroes, it's definitely looking likely. Yeah, I really like this uh, draft coming out of Georgia Tech. They have the Dazzle as kind of a pseudo replacement for Wyvern. It gives them plus armor as opposed to, you know, the pure or the physical damage entirely disrupted by, uh, what's it called? Cold Embrace. So plus armor does basically the same thing. Having the Grave, another good save. You know, it fills a similar role. I'm, I'm, I like it. So it really just depends on how their laning goes. Will they put the Centaur in the solo offlane again, have the Earthshaker Dazzle dual supporting? Or are they looking to go aggro here? You know, Dazzle is not a bad aggro hero. Earthshaker also, you know, not a bad aggro hero. Catch out uh, good positions for uh, your carry to just secure kills. I don't know. Mm, Dazzle's a bit stronger in lane than the Winter Wyvern. Yeah, exactly. The so, cooldown on the Poison Touch being a lot lower, and it's also a lot more spammable because of that, and he can just continuously harass out the offlaner or whoever is sent to the offlane. And with the Shadow Demon Luna, they're probably going to be queued up in the safe lane. So it's up to UC Davis now to decide what they want to lane against uh, Georgia Tech. And they're going to pick up the Sand King once again. Solid offlaner, fills the same role as Slardar Axe. So it's, uh, it's slipped through. They played it last game, did they not, on UC Davis? Yeah, they did. So it's uh, odd that they let it through, but they banned uh, Axe and Slardar. Maybe they're just more scared of what those two heroes offer, and they're like, Ten okay, you are saying King didn't impress us last game. Try it again, buddy. Um, also, if you look at the reserve time, they used almost all of the reserve time on both teams, so these last picks are going to have to come out reserve very quickly time. and without too much thought. So will this uh, lead to an outdraft one way or another? Let's just uh, let's see it. All right, there's wow. the CK I was talking about in the first draft. They're going to wow. go for that instead of the Spectre. This hero has been weak for such a long time, for multiple years now as a carry, and it's slowly making a comeback. I've seen it more and more. Do you know why it all is making a comeback? Is it just good with their strategy, with their synergy of heroes, or what's, what's the deal here? I think uh, it's definitely player-related to some extent, but as well with their draft, it fits with how they want to play, just uh, with the Earthshaker providing that stun 
and the CK as well. It gives them a pretty strong lane, and I guess Dazzle using the heal bomb and the illusions. There's some synergy there as well as the center ultimate, allowing him to just run in with the four horsemen of the apocalypse. <laughs> And look at that, they're just going to throw us for a loop again on UC Davis. It's not going to be a solo offlane Sand King. They're going to pick Tidehunter, who is 9 times out of 10 the uh, offlaner. And then they're going to have Sand King as a support, maybe? They did a dual lane last game with a Sand King Venge. Is that going to be the similar strategy this time with a Sand King Tide? Or is that going to be like a solo safe lane Tide, maybe, with an aggressive lane from Luna, Shadow Demon, and Sand King? I feel like Shadow Demon and Sand King are going to be together. Maybe not right at the start of the game, but they're definitely going to make rotations together as we saw that Venge and the Slaughter did in the last game. Five seconds remain. Uh, how does Tide fare against Earthshaker Dazzle? Uh, CK... That's, that's alright. CK actually does blow up Tidehunter entirely. Tidehunter like, has the passive, so after you take around 400 damage, you just purge yourself and you can cast your ultimate. But Chaos Knight is notorious for like one hitting heroes. You have the minus armor from your uh, reality rift, you have a crit, and you have four horsemen up to four, maybe even five now if you get the lucky 50% proc. That could be enough just to blow up Tide before he even gets the ultimate off, and then the team fight is very in favor of George Tech. Alright, Shadow Fiend coming out. That most likely will be a lucky 57 Shadow Fiend, and that will complete their draft. Just looking at what they have right now, how do you feel about their draft so far? It's a strong it's like draft, I think. It's well balanced. Shadow Fiend being one of the most popular mid laners in this patch so far, just because of his abilities to just push out lanes, as well as take down towers, which is pretty important. Yeah, they have solid push, they have solid team fight, they have solid uh, solid magic damage, so like fight from behind if they're not really doing too well. Luna ult, Shadow Fiend ult, Tide ult, Sand King ult, they all do AoE magic damage. And a response of a sniper, does beat Shadow Fiend in lane, but I'm not sure. How do you feel about that with Sand King and Tidehunter to kind of close the gap on them? It feels like they're kind of uh, going for the same thing where they're going to realize they're going to lose the early game to some extent, but try to take it back by getting some really nice tower defenses with the Earthshaker off. And I let's see how it pans out for them once again. It's, it's definitely a similar strategy. There's some different heroes, but the general idea is a bit similar. I really like this uh, draft out of the uh, UC Davis side for the general well-rounded part, but I think uh, Georgia Tech here has something to show. They have more showbody, un showbody, untraditional heroes. Chaos Knight, not a common pickup. Sniper has been becoming more of a common pickup, but it's still... Uh, I don't know. I have flashbacks to the ho ho ha ha meta still. Yeah, Sniper is right now is a bit on the fringe. He's not one of the most popular heroes your teams are picking up, but we're seeing him a lot more since uh, the last patch. Even right. though we did see him a bit towards the end of last patch. Uh, you want to do the. A absolutely. <laughs> Quick on the intros here, we have a. Centaur War Runner played by Ludden Toke teleporting the offlane, planning a quick ward. Add Stant once again on the Earthshaker. We have Sniper played in mid by Game is Hard. He is the Spectre player from last game, so they're actually swapping up roles. He is on the safe lane. Two Searing Chains on the uh, safe lane carry Chaos Knight. Bartlett on the support Dazzle. On the uh, UC Davis squad, they are smoked up, led by Shokobo on the Shadow Demon. Uh, Asian character name on the Sand King. BG on the mid. Shadow Fiend, Luna played by Lucky57, and Hope on the Tide Hunter. They will find Bartlett, they will Shadow Demon disrupt him, followed up by a stun. He will grave, it'll just stall it out, but he is not gonna live here. They wanna give it to the uh, BG here because he now starts with 12 souls in lane. That is a huge advantage, and they will still get two runes. Mud and Toke going to take the offlane rune. Huge advantage for a uh, side of UCD. Also, I think. Their rules it's are not a lucky too. 57 shadow yeah, yeah, lucky 57 also switched up, so he will be playing safe lane. So it will once again be a matchup between carry and carry in the mid lane, and then mid lane and mid lane in the carry role. So let's see how this goes. We haven't seen uh, these roles for the new players. You know, sniper kind of gives Shadow Fiend a bit of trouble in the early game it stages with this 12 does. souls. Yeah, it he's gonna be doing just fine, even be able to dominate this lane. 76 damage beginning with boots as well because he got first blood and a rune. This is a huge advantage. I don't know. This this lane started as a huge advantage for Sniper just due to the 1v1 matchup, but four denies, two last hits for Shadow Fiend. He's most likely going to get them all. 
he does not, but even oh, still, yes, that's, yes. that's big. And the lanes will be a jungling tide hunter with nobody in the off lane. He's going to kind of abandon that. And then the Shadow Demon and uh, Sand King dual support. That's an easy setup for Sand King stun. And then Chaos or Centaur War Warrunner will not be able to lane here. He does have return level 1, so he's just going to go in jungle and salve up and be safe. Uh, they missed the D ward in the top lane here, which is going to be really unfortunate for them. The supports are a little bit level dependent, not so much the Earthshaker, but definitely Dazzle wanting to get something other than this level 1 point in Grave. Yeah, they will still get a pull from the big camp, but considering they are against nobody, they are committing these heroes for almost nothing. And the same thing in the bottom lane, they are against nobody and they are committing two heroes. So it might be a battle of who ganks mid successfully first. Uh, Sniper is does get the lane under his tower, does get level 3, and with his second point in Shrapnel, he might be able to get control back over this lane, but Shadow, Shadow Fiend is securely in the lead. Centaur might be in trouble here. Yeah, he gets, Sand King gets the, the stun. A good stun followed by a good disruption. He has nowhere to run, and level 2 Centaur doesn't really escape, but almost gets it denied by the, the Centaur stomp because there are three heroes nearby, but he does not. Game is hard being ran at by Shadow Fiend mid. He has to salve up. He does get raised again. BG is just playing this lane very solidly. How do you feel about these matchups in the safe lane, considering both of them have free farm? Luna is a very traditional safe, uh, safe lane hero, scales very well. Oh! Hastrin coming in from Sand King's build gonna be here, right? Hastrin from uh, Sand King mid does get a stun onto Sniper. One raise will connect. Second raise will not be needed because uh, Shadow Demon also shows up. So BG sitting at 100 health, 50 mana under tower, but he does get out of way with a kill. Actually, the kill goes the way of Sand King, but he will shrine up. He will be healthy. He will be fine going back to lane. Um. Sorry, what were you saying about the carries again? I asked you a question right before. I'm uh, interested on the CK's build this game. What is he actually going to go for? And it's pretty much going to determine how he can scale, as they're probably going to have to take this game later, as they're already losing the early game quite heavily. And against the Luna Shadow Fiend, they're going to start to feel pressured. Oh, for sure. Right around that 10 minute mark. Chaos Knight traditionally weak in lane, so the fact that he's given a almost free lane is a big deal. He might be able to get to his first core timing or his peak uh, strength timing and may uh, come back to an advantage in his lane or in the game. But uh, he is one of the only hopes left because Centaur is being ran at in the jungle, Sniper is being ran at mid. And that is their only winning lane because it is an empty lane. The support's not making full use of the safe lane here, and because the supports on the side of Radiant got their rotations off, they're gonna be ahead in oh, gold. Here's another quite gank mid, right Sand King just walking behind the tower straight into a sniper, gets the stun off, but Dazzle is waiting there for him. He will just TP out in front of their faces, waste some time, waste the shrapnel charge. This sniper is only level 3, and Shadow Fiend is level 5 and a half. They are definitely struggling and feeling the pressure here right now. And he has a quarter of Shadow Fiend's last hits. Let's look at the net worth really briefly. 2300 net worth against almost a thousand. So it is it is as in favor of Shadow Fiend as we expect. Or not as we expected from the start, but as we expected from how these kills and uh, early momentum has gone. Now he has to have Dazzle but just sit here's behind him to help him out. But Earthshaker gets a stun, blocks off the retreat. He will just kind of run to the, the high ground. The stun won't hit though. Yeah. And no poison touch on Dazzle means that he's gonna be able to walk away Shrapnel with his boots. Shrapnel is still on cooldown too. This uh, BG just has dominant control still, even though he's being ganked by three heroes. And as we say that, that's an end of his rune on Shadow Demon. They might look for another kill on Sniper here. There is he a sentry ward there. into a raise. This should be a kill. They Sniper is going to see him and yeah. he's going to walk away. Now he'll realize as the range creeps will give him a 1 2 punch. <laughs> Luna actually Luna acting for taunting a Dragon bottom. Lance. Yeah, he's just going right for the built. early game aggression. Wow, no boots either. He realizes that uh, this lane was empty, this lane is free, so you may as well just go for the item that helps you push. It doesn't quite help as much as a Helm of Dominator would, but it does give him the attack range to attack a little bit safer, hit that sniper That's a little bit easier. That's a really interesting build. I've never seen that before. <laughs> Neither have I, but maybe it'll work out for him. 
Lucky 57. He's gonna have it right player, now. So. Alright, we're gonna see the six minutes Dragon Lance. No boots on Luna. That's, uh. That's unique to say the least, but. You know, he's level 6, he has an Eclipse, he's looking for this tower and a kill already. Sanken going once again back to mid, it looks like he will be scouted out, the ward will be placed but they don't notice, so Sanken just hunting down the sniper, making sniper feel uncomfortable farming mid lane even though the tower is being pushed. He'll use Trapdoll to try to get some CS and try to pull the creep lane back, he will get 2, possibly 3, but... He is still sitting at only 14 CS here, he is being beat by the offlaner and carry and off uh, mid. And he will go down. Shadow Fiend with a heads up play pushes the tower then walks up and around from the tree line. A good reality TK, rift. TP is in, but yeah. will he be able to catch someone? One more right click onto Sand King. Sand King's at 30 health and no mana. There will be return onto Shadow Demon. Shadow Demon will also go down here, so that is both supports dying, but a five man rotation from the uh, dire squad of Georgia Tech. Oh, they wanted the Shadow Fiend there, but he's yeah, they, gonna be able to just walk his way out. You can't be uh, too picky when you're behind, though. They got two kills. They got it on their core safe laner and their off laner, so they're they're coming back a little bit, and that's what they need. They need kills like that, back to back to back. Get them back in this game via mistakes of UCD rather than just out farming, because at this point they're being outscaled. Tidehunter is so farmed though, he Tide almost is level the same six. amount of farm as the CK. Yeah, Tidehunter is level 6, did not go for his ultimate, he just went for the lane presence, uh, anchor smash and crack and shell, and he's gonna be level 7 soon, I assume he'll pick up his ult and look for some sort of engagement. Uh, compare that to the Centaur, who is only level 5, he just got level 5, that is a big advantage for the offlaner as well here. Alright, Luna is going for yeah. the definitely the no boots. He goes for a Banda Elven skin instead of the boots. No, the Banda Elven skin oh, will cool. like, you know, it'll build into the treads. You can replace yeah, the Belt of Strength yeah, or yeah, Robo Magi yeah. with that. So he will go back for the boots finally. At eight minutes in, still no boots. It's kind of silly, but when you're not against any heroes, you know, it's it's more efficient to go damage items. Allows her to push the lane harder and uh, have extra damage for that last hit as well. But this tide is actually going to be a major problem for uh, Georgia Tech, I believe. He's level 8 now. He's still not level to Ravage. Yeah, both of the supports taken over the mid lane to try to just catch up on levels while both of the mids back off to the jungle. Sniper is just using shrapnel to farm out the camps. He does hit level 6. Meanwhile, Shadow Fiend with his max rays will farm the jungle much faster. Look at that though. He went an Aquila, an infused raindrop, and a void stone first. So he really wants to just spam out these raises and get the farm. He is going for a Yule Scepter too, so he's just looking for the easy setup on his ultimate. It is a very stylish and uh, showboaty ultimate when used correctly in sync with the Yules, because it is almost a guaranteed one hit. Do you like that item pick up, or do you wish he'd went on something more team fight, more aggressive, to uh, you know synergize with his Shadow Demon Luna push strategy? I don't think that's uh, the build, but if he's trying to show off and make the flashy plays, that's the build for that. Meanwhile, bottom, they will uh, dive under tower, they will disrupt Centaur right before he ultimates. So he will end up going down to the Luna Eclipse. So Luna is a little bit deep, gets turned around. This gank is very bad in favor of uh, UCD. They will lose their safe lane Luna, and they will lose their Sand King diving behind the tower for only their Chaos Knight. Or their Centaur War Runner, runner my bad. There are two CC heroes that are on horses, or are horses, so easy to mistake. But UCD, they're gonna pressure mid. They know that there is a huge rotation of the Radiant or Dire team towards bottom, and now they are all together going mid to stop that push. There is just a lot of space on the map for all three cores of UCD. When one is pressured, the other two are uh, partying up. And if you look at the CS, it's just, it's scary how far, how farmed uh, Tidehunter is. It's 10 minutes in and he has as many CS as a safe laner or a mid does. Yeah, as we said, he they have some ways to deal with him with their burst, but Dyer's at this point top he's top way top too top farmed top. and he's going to be a problem for the next 10 minutes as they're going to have trouble taking him out before he can get the Ravage off on all their heroes. And that's uh, first tower going down the way of UCD. He will be ran at by Centaur Warrunner who had Tranquil Boots and he is very quick. He has a haste rune as well, but 
that won't be enough to catch the Luna, Radiant's even with the Earthshaker Fissure to stall them out. They are going to just back off after losing the tower. Nothing more to gain there. How do you feel about the build Tide of Tidehunter has a completed mech. Alright, wow. we're talking about Centaur. Okay. So yeah, if you compare the items, Tidehunter has a mech. He's looking just to walk up with his team and be a frontlining mech alt machine. Centaur, I was going to say, how do you feel about him also skipping a Blink Dagger? He's going for the Cloak, but he is much further behind towards his uh, Hood of Defiance. Oh, I don't think on Centaur as an offlaner you ever rush Blink. You definitely need at least the Cloak or the Vanguard first to help you sustain. Otherwise, you just kill yourself too fast with the double edge. Well, mid tower will go the way also of UCD. That's a second tower going down. And now with uh, Tide having his ultimate, they might just group up top and go for that third tier one at 11 minutes in. They have a huge lead. If you look at the net worth, it's almost 7,500 in favor of uh, UCD. XP is almost at 6,000. What does what does uh, the Radiant Georgia Tech squad or er, Dire Georgia Tech squad have to do to hold uh, stay into this game? Because they do have Sniper, who is a very like turtley defensive hero. You just drop no towers and sit back. But is that enough? All they can do right now is uh, respond to what you see Davis does across the map because they have really no options to make plays. Even if they smoke, they have a Dazzle and Earthshaker with no blink yet. They don't really have the initiation that they really need to get something done, especially with the Shadow Demon in this game. If they initiate on the wrong target, they'll just be disrupted and turned around with a Ravage or something like that. So when you say they need to respond to what UCD does, does that mean do you want to see them fight into UCD, or do you want to see them just avoid and uh, stay away from this 5-man dota? Uh, they need to avoid and take fights when they have some type of an advantage, and right now well, it looks like this is what you're going to talking about. take out the Shadow Demon. One for one so far, support for support, Shadow Demon will go down, but unfortunately Centaur will also go down. Or Chaos Knight will also go down. Ravage coming out, hit is the Centaur. That's gonna be a four for one, and Shadow Demon's already respawning, so. Ooh, the mech there saving Shadow Fiend. He's only at 200 health. With the rain drop as well as the mech, he will be uh, getting out of there alive. He's gonna TP to base while his team most likely finishes the push here on the tower. And that's only a level 4 Shadow Demon. That was hardly a kill at all. Right. Yeah, lowest got a level, lowest level. Relatively network. good amount of gold from it, still, which just shows how far they're behind in this game. Yeah, that's incredible. The, the support on the side of UCD is worth almost double what the support on the side of uh, uh, Georgia Tech was. And with that, Luna's just going to secure another tower. She is now level 12 with a Yasha on the way. This hero is very farmed, has 100 last hits, same, same as their uh, Shadow Fiend mid lane. Both of these cores are very snowball-y heroes, so is their snowball enough for them to finish it, or are they still feeling a little bit hesitant? They want to just keep farming and secure late game win. They're fine with just farming up. They know how ahead they are, and it is up to Georgia Tech to go for this Hail Mary smoke play well, now. Yeah, Five here smoke heroes smoked up. They don't see Shadow Fiend, though. Shadow Fiend now has a blank. He'll blink up and further into their jungle. They might find Shakobo, who is sitting very low health. They will bar to be careful. Him out. A centaur stun will instant, or a centaur uh, double edge will instantly kill that shadow demon. But now shadow uh, centaur is under tower, gets weaved up, so he does have armor and he gets graved. But shadow fiend blinking into the back line. Eclipse coming out, centaur alt also coming out. Sniper will assassinate Luna. Will finish off the Luna, but they have already lost two and they are trying to make an escape here. Ravage is not up still, but Shadow Fiend will blink in, he will use the Centaur, he will cast his ultimate. It will not be enough to insta-gib the Chaos Knight, and Chaos Knight does have an armlet. Four seconds stun coming out, armlet toggle trying to keep him alive, but a raise will be there to secure the kill. And that will be a three for one at the end, three for two at the end of the day. I forgot, Shadow Demon died, respawned, and teleported back in before the fight was over. The, the fight recap does say that uh, Georgia Tech got more money out of that despite losing three heroes. Yeah, they somehow killed the Luna there, which is pretty impressive. It's just the damage output coming from the CK. Yeah, Luna did but... not go for a super tanky build. He has a power treads onto agility and a Yasha, so he only has plus tw uh, 12 strength in his entire build, or an extra three from his Aquila. So he's not super tanky right now, and he gets punished for it. A blink up onto high ground, a missed raise, but Bartlett will not survive very long. The grave is not off cooldown, but there's no reaction there. Even if you're. Yeah, that was a smoke coming out. 
from UCD. Haste Rune, UCD, BG goes and finds the Centaur, Yules him to make time for Sand King to get there. They both juke the stun, huge juke, and then they do secure the kill once again on Centaur, so they are just getting these crucial kills that are allowing for a push. They are looking to push top tower, and yeah, Georgia Tech does not want to defend it. They've seen how these last few fights have gone, and they know Ravage is back up if they're keeping track of timers. So they're just looking to farm out the other waves, get some farm where they need. Sniper does have a Maelstrom. Brown Boots into Maelstrom shows how desperate they are. That's a lot of damage output, but he is extremely squishy, no sort of mobility. He doesn't even have a Dragon Lance for that extra sort of tankiness and range. So they are really relying on these uh, this farming speed and defensive power from their just natural team comp. And CK is not the best comeback hero, it's... Oh, definitely not. That's that's one of the big problems with the hero and why he's not picked very much, is that you don't really have a good farming mechanism other than farming heroes. So, with that, I think UCD is sniffing out the weakness in the draft, and knows that Chaos Knight won't be able to fight, and they might push high ground here. They do have Ravage, they do have their ultimate on Luna, uh, and they have their Requiem of Souls ultimate from Shadow Fiend, so... They might just look to push high ground here. Yeah, they eat a weave and they're gonna probably back out, maybe go for Roshan. Yeah, they might just go for the other objectives. There's still two tier 2 towers up on the map. The shrines are still up because the tier 2s are up. Roshan has not been taken yet. They don't feel the rush to try to end the game now and potentially throw it with a... You know, a hasted high ground push. Or a hasty high ground push. But, like you said, they're just going to Rosh. You know you're in trouble when both your mid and your carry are just farming like two camps next to each other. They're so choked out of the map as they're afraid to just walk anywhere with the blink coming out from the Sand King as well as the Shadow Fiend. He what? can get solo kills, but they are in Roshan right now, so... On the bright side from uh, Georgia Tech, this Chaos Knight does have his core armlet, which is a huge item. He's going for a... Uh, Echo Saber here, which we saw the other day. It's it's an all right item. It'll help him bulk up. Earthshaker is uh, nearing his blink dagger, only 700 gold away. Sniper does have boots fully completed or treads fully completed, a maelstrom and a uh, dragon lance queued up. So they have a defense, a potential defense ready once they get these next wave of items. Uh, Shadow even didn't level his ult to level 6. Yeah, he's just doubling down for this uh, push. I don't know why you opt for the third point in Soul Catcher over the ultimate, but when you're pushing like this, as long as you're maxing your disruption, I'm sure you're fine with it. They will find a blink stun or a stun up here onto Sniper. That's going to be godlike for BG's Shadow Fiend at 18 minutes. 9-0 and 4, level 15, highest level on the map. Does he have the highest net worth as well? He does. Yep. He is a baller this game, and he didn't even have to take the Aegis. He felt so confident in his game that he gave it to the Luna, and they're going to allow Luna to push high ground with a Manta coming out, having the Shadow Demon Illusions, and just this is their timing. Shadow Fiend just picked up an Ags. Did he now? Wow, so this ultimate from Shadow Fiend, if he blinks in and ults, that's going to be extremely tough to deal with on the side of, uh, on the side of Georgia Tech. There's no blink yet on another yeah. Sheikar either. They're looking like they want to back off. Maybe they're going to double down and get tier 2 bottom first. But it might just be a fake back. They're just securing themselves behind the trees, hiding when they can. And they're just going to go right back in. They have the Manta. They have... Wait, where is the Manta? Oh, there it is. It's on the courier. Manta is now complete. Shadow Demon Illusions just chipping away at towers. Look at Lucky57, though. This, this defense, it's nothing to laugh at. Nugget 57 down to 400 health just from a simple shrapnel and sniper maelstrom procs, and they only get a couple hundred damage on the tower, so... Maybe, uh, Georgia Tech is feeling confident with their high ground. They're just uh, standing here, biding their time, and UCD knows this. They realize that last push didn't go as flawlessly as they'd hoped. They're just gonna secure the farm, secure the map advantage, probably go for that tier 2 bottom while... Centaur just taunts in his base because they don't know where to go. If you look at the map control, they have no vision whatsoever other than the creep waves. They're trying to say, let's push out top and mid because our tier 2 bottom is the last objective. It is very likely for UCD to push it, so they're going to scramble to the top lane, scramble to their jungle, and get something while they can. Yeah, UCD didn't go for any sustain oh, items. But look at this, so... Invis, Invis oh. Sand King, he sees yes. the sniper. He doesn't know where the rest of the team is. So he might yeah, just go for the solo right kill. Now. 
If he goes for a stun ultimate, he might have enough. But yeah, he, he's gonna go Shadow for Fiend's a stun ultimate. In. There is a response from Dazzle, so Dazzle is there, but Shadow Fiend is also getting close. He has a blink dagger, but the shrapnel, no, he cancel it. he'll just give up. So, with that, tier 2 bottom goes down. A little bit of a stall onto the sniper, so sniper doesn't farm as much, but the rest of his team does manage to push out the top lane and get some items. It was a bit of a wasted Abbey Center there. But... Yeah. But it's uh, it's just to test the waters, see what's the reaction gonna be, see where the other heroes are. And they're gonna go for the shrines here. They still have Aegis. It's only gonna be up for another one, two, three. So about a minute and a half left on the Aegis for Luna. Are they gonna try to push high ground with this Aegis, or are they just gonna secure the map, take out the shrines, and just farm up because they are so far ahead right now they can't afford to? Okay, back to what I was saying, they didn't go for any sustain items on the side of Radiance. Uh, they don't have the helm or the pipe coming out from the tide, so when pushing high ground, the chip damage is slowly going to tick them down and uh, force them to leave, otherwise they're going to start feeding kills away. But yeah. I think they're content with just farming now and get their next set of items. If we look at the Tide's new pickup, he didn't even go back for the blink. He just doubled down on this kind of frontliner, obnoxiously tanky hero. He has a full Solar Crest complete, a drums, and a mech. So he will literally just be the one who walks into the base and sits there, and he'll taunt the centaur back, I hope. That'd be pretty funny, but... Uh, centaur walks up, he will run into the Sand King and Tide, but they won't have enough to kill Centaur, and Centaur is actually going to turn the Tides, and a kill will come out onto the Sand King. They will look for a kill in the back line. So, oh, wow. Uh, full combo. Yeah, full Shadow Fiend ult. I think he used the Yule's combo to secure the kill on Sniper. Earthshaker will also go down. Look at this. They can't kill the Tide. Even with the Chaos Knight here as the carry. And they just lose three for that Sand King. And without Sniper having a buyback, and with their uh, Chaos Knight having a buyback but being dead for so long, they're going to force something here. Aegis is reclaimed, and this tower is going to fall incredibly quickly. BG blinks in, he forces the reaction out of Dazzle. Dazzle will have to use the Shrine and Grave. Shadow Look how much damage fall. he's doing to the Centaur. And meanwhile, Luna's just being an objective gamer, takes out the tower, and now the Glaives do their real work, now that they can hit multiple targets. Both of these racks are just falling incredibly quick. Shadowfiend almost died to the tower there. But Shadow, or, uh, Shadow Demon saves him with the destruction. And now they will just take the sets of racks and they will get away. Maybe Lucky57 is going to stay a second too long with the team respawning, but they will not use any buybacks from the side of Georgia Tech, so they're going to cut their losses there. Luna now has a BKB, so it's going to be even harder to stop this push. Wait, oh, Luna's BKB is still in the, the career, and BG's just going to go back, heal up, and they're going to regroup and push mid, right? That is uh, the plan for UCD, just try to end the game while they're ahead. Uh, that's all they have to do. This CK actually can't fight without his BKB, and he's very far away from it. And Sniper in base does have the advantage, as it's kind of hard to dive him at the tier 4s, but fighting anywhere outside the base, I don't see them being able to win. Okay, so this game, I don't want to say it's quite over for, for uh, Georgia Tech, but if you look at the net worth, 25k net worth at 24 minutes, that's over 1k gold per minute net worth advantage for the side of UCD. That is extremely tough to beat, and I don't have the stats on it, but I'm sure the percentage of a win rate for the Raid Dire team here is extremely low. Shadow Fiend will just BKB, Yule's blink and try to force the sniper. He does get graved up, but he will finish That's a really nice though. Echo Slam onto 4 though. Lucky57 also has an Aegis, or has a BKB, will use his, her ultimate after BKBing, and that will only be the Shadow Demon going down. Sniper will have to buy back there, but, you know, Lucky57 is low here, he will get assassinated, has 100 health, and he has to back out as well. They're gonna try to finish out uh, melee racks here before they leave. They might actually double down and go for the range racks too, but this could be dangerous. You stay a little bit past your welcome and you could be punished here. Sniper is chipping away, UCD Hope is sitting at 280 health, will get assassinated, and that will be enough to finish off the kill. BG tried to go into Yule's the Sniper to save it, but he might go down for it now, sitting at 490 health. Blinken, it misses from the 4 staff. Sand King is saving his Shadow Fiend there, showing why he is the support player, he is saving his team spot. And with that, a moderate hold from the side of uh, 
George attack. They do lose melee racks and range racks are down really low, but they had to expend a buyback on Sniper. I think it was on Sniper. Yeah, uh, Sniper about that. Yeah, Sniper used the buyback and they still lost more heroes than the Radiant Squad did. So every fight, you know, I still have hope. Uh, Georgia Tech does manage to hold this bit by bit, a little bit ev uh, better every fight, but it's like what we saw last game. All they need to do is just systematically take out these barracks, and that's going to be enough to secure the game. They will look for a kill on San Kinkir, but they'll be uh, repelled off by uh, Shadow Fiend also being there. Hey, check out the Shadow Demon. I was talking about the lack of sustain. Oh, he picked up the helm, and he has two selves. <laughs> I like it. Uh, uh, Blink, Yule's ultimate combo out of Shadow Fiend here. They do manage to kill the sniper after he gets graved up, but there will be a return kill on the Sand King. Dazzle will also go down. Huge Ooh. damage coming out of this Chaos Knight. That Echo Saber getting a double crit right there. They're trying to get a kill here on the Chaos or the Shadow Demon. They will stun him, but Tide is there to ravage and turn it around. from the Shadow Fiend. There, there's the self. Doing work. <laughs> Salve in the middle of the fight. You want to be healthy and you don't want to run. Chaos Nut or Centaur War Runner gets right clicked down by a Luna who has a Eagle Song now. That's a lot of damage. That's going to be a four for one and no buyback on the two cores. Lucky 57 is going to go straight for the base. He doesn't care about top racks. They expect buybacks are going to be down. And is this just going to be game? Two buybacks used immediately. Dazzle graved himself in the back line. He will be healed up. Centaur. Uses Echo the Slam stun, Echo Slam will miss, but that will be Shadow Fiend dying here. Meanwhile, both tier fours are dead. That will be a return kill on both of the heroes with buyback. Lucky 57 does end up dying, but uh, Sniper does respawn. Chaos Knight's gonna be up in a few seconds. Dazzle yeah, gets stunned up and killed. They're diving fountain, or it gets uh, reality rifted into the fountain. Sniper's sitting here uh, poking at it, but Luna's just hitting the Ancient. Ancient's gonna fall. GG is called. And that victory looked a lot more dominant for UC Davis than the last one. They are showing why they were 7-0 last season and why they are one of the top contenders for the season. What do you have Georgia to say Tech about this game? Georgia didn't recover from that first blood. The 12 Soul Shadow Fiend dominated mid and just a simple support rotations from the side of UC Davis secured them the early game and from there they just steamrolled them. Now was that first blood, do you think, enough to secure the momentum that they needed for these lanes? Because they won mid lane, if... I think it was only off of that, if not the stellar play as well. Do you think that was just what it was? That first rotation was huge for the Shadow Fiend? It was definitely the start, uh, the start especially of the with the supports just sitting mid as well. Their Shaker and Dazzle were forced to lead the lane, allowing the Tide to get free farm. He really pretty much allowed them to group up and start taking towers with that really early mech coming out before the 10 minute mark, I believe. Well, there you have it. UC Davis, a dominant 2-0 here. They have secured a victory for their first game of the second half of the season. And I will, uh, I will have to say thank you, Hachiko, for casting with me today. I am Zingle. This is Hachiko. Any last words? Any shout outs? Uh, I got nothing. All right. I would just uh, like to thank CSL for letting me cast today. I'm a bit of a stand-in caster, but I hope you guys enjoyed the coverage of this game. All right. And uh, there will be another game coming up shortly between UT Austin and Michigan State, if I am not uh, incorrect. And I would like to give a one last shout-out and plug to our sponsor, Band. Here is an ad, and I will see you guys shortly. Only $14.99. Don't miss the call. Download Band. Communication made easy.